panic attack all the way. You didn't even know why your, she didn't know, she didn't know, like maybe you don't know, why your reactions are your reactions. So at 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, your strengths are too big for the child. Your strengths are so big, you don't know what to do with them. And unless there is a language, a framework, a set of concepts to understand or help, in this case, my show, you understand that my reactions aren't weird. That wasn't a disease you had. That was what we're calling now stimulator. That was a strength. But I thought something was wrong with me. You thought you were nuts. <laughs> Stimulator. Absolutely. I'm gonna put that on. Wait, are we are we are we going? Yeah. Okay. So okay, uh, we are in the land of stimulator. Hence uh, the hat and uh, whatever whatever this is. Wait, just, just just give me that. For, no, no, just give me that for a second. Why? So this looks like an ordinary. Hold it up high. <laughs> I'm being told. I feel like the shopping <laughs> channel. Right? Um, this looks like an ordinary. Sorry, my chair. This looks like an ordinary coffee cup, but it's not an ordinary coffee cup. It's made by, who's it made by? Workaday Handmade. Workaday Handmade. A, um, a guy named Forrest makes all of them by A hand. chappy named Forrest makes all of these. And for my shell, a stimulator for her is number one. It's me too. Um, this isn't just a coffee cup. I have not seen a person more excited than when this coffee cup showed up. Because for her, like many simulators, every single sense is heightened. She is, I'm, she's here, but it, this is exciting for her because there's a feel to this terracotta coffee cup. There's a look and a shape that's kind of funny to the handle. There's a story behind it because the chappie's net, what's the name again? Forest. Forest is the person who makes it, so she can sort of there's a whole story, there's a novel in this cup. It smells earthy. It smells, uh, it smells like coffee. No, but it, it smells, has a very specific earth. Trust us, it smells very earthy. And if you are a stimulator, your senses are turned up to 11 and everything for you is heightened. That's, that's what you go through life with. You're ex you don't want the bland and the flat and the emotionally neutral. You want a coffee cup with a story. Okay, up here, <laughs> coffee cup with a story and a feeling and a smell. Why? Because it heightens the experience of drinking coffee. I've got these, these are jars. All the drinks that we drink in this darn house are out of, in this case, a jar. Why? Because a jar, it has a story behind it. There was something in the jar before it became a jar that you could drink. And so for my shell, we've, we've heightened, we're drinking here, where we've heightened, or she has, the whole experience of having a drink and she can't turn it off. Or rather say to that more positively, it delights her so much when she gets something like this. And for all stimulators, what you're trying to do in your life, but what you're trying to do in everyone else's life, is you're trying to make the whole experience of life more memorable, more exciting, more um, dramatic, more defined, more fully human. And by the way, I imagine, because I don't know any different, that everyone would be just as excited about that mug as I am. Maybe not that particular mug, but about drinking your morning beverage in something super special. Like it, it should be super special. So when I host or have people over, I feel like they're gonna get the biggest, you know. And you always find that they do. Sometimes, not always. But it's the same thing. We were talking about this with Provider yesterday. You measure other people by your own yardstick. So as stimulators, we can't imagine that the rest of humanity can't get the same kick, jolt of excitement out of a coffee cup as we do. Or, or for me, if I'm watching someone present and they're not grabbing the audience, I can't stay in the room. I mean, I, I, I physically have to leave because I can't imagine that everyone isn't going, Oh my word, this is, this is worse than neutral. This is just depleting the people and I can't stay in the room. I have to walk out. So it's kind of a weird thing, isn't it? You, you have a sister, your sis hasn't got, she's not, as, your sis is delighted by many, many, many things. She's not delighted by this. Right, right. This doesn't even make sense to her. <clears throat> um, and I'm sure that's kind of weird because you grew up in the same house, the same, you know, upbringing, the same parents, the same bit. She'll serve and, coffee in anything. 
She'll serve coffee, yeah, in a... Any place will do. Good, you know, God forbid, a, a Starbucks cup. <laughs> Disaster. Um, and it's funny, isn't it? We think that people's natural talents and gifts are a function of their, um, of their, how they're parented, what they grew up with, what things they were taught when they grew up. But you've got you and you've got Tamara. And they, in terms of the stimulator thing, just my shells is turned up in a way that, that Tamara's isn't. And it's not a function of anything else other than the clash of the chromosomes. These are two really different people. So if you are a stimulator, just know you're special. That's that. <laughs> um, but you're special because your world really is louder. It's more vibrant. It's heightened. And, and everyone's isn't the same way as yours. And it's one of those things that you've got to... You think about all five senses. All the time, right? Yeah. For, for you, all the time. And how you can sort of twist and turn those to change someone else's energy if I play the right music at this meeting if I if it smells a certain way you know all of those that's things why, you think about that's why we turn to you because you take our normal humdrum experience of life and we don't even know what the dials are we don't quite know what you're doing but whatever it is that you're doing make this more interesting more fun more exciting and more play, things that I will remember more things that I will learn you've just You've just brought my experience up and people are attracted to you because of that. It's, it's like we don't quite know what you did, but it was better. It was just better. Can I ask you oh, a quick question? Yes. Unless you were right in the middle of a thought, were you? No, no, no I was just, I, I, you know, as with all these things, I was just thinking that it, it's, it's quite a lot for the person that has it. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Oh, so okay. You, you took that from me. Good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is, as you know, because you have it. So it's it's like jolts of energy because your all five senses are always up. Yeah. You're worried about, um, or you're considerate always of the experience of a person that's with you, their emotions, all of that. Um, do you have, sometimes I wish, sometimes it could be overwhelming, so I wish I could dial that down a little bit because I'm just exhausted. I don't want to have to worry about everyone in the room. I just want... Do you have any strategies for being able to do that? Well, like, yeah, S being a stimulator can, it can weigh you down. I mean, people will be drawn to you and they'll be like, they, they will want this from you and, and you'll have to give it. And then there'll be other days where you're like, I just, I can't seem to shut off all of this input that's hitting me about the world and how it can be heightened and turned up. And the worst advice that anyone, that I could give you, or the worst advice that anyone could give you, is turn it down. Really? You may wish sometimes that you want to turn, but the, the advice isn't turn it down. The advice is, is channel it. A strength is made up of love, if you think about it. It's, it's those particular activities or situations that you love. Things that you draw strength from and energy from. And like love, therefore, it needs to be expressed. It can't just be held. If you just hold it inside you like this, it will, it, it will destroy you. If you channel it, it will create you, but you hold it inside, it will burn you up from the inside. You've noticed, I'm sure, remember you telling me that um, when your papa died, your grandfather died, and you were, what, 16? Mm -hmm. You were thrown, you were stunned, right? Um, just rocked in a way that you never had been before and your life was sort of stopped what got you going what got you back what helped you move writing writing you started writing and writing and about, writing about and writing the trauma. about everything right and that's for you when your dad died the only way you process that trauma for you as a stimulator is through the expression you wrote the eulogy you wrote this this beauty you couldn't stop yourself right Whenever you're dealing with um, overwhelm, or if you're dealing with trauma or grief, the best advice for you, the stimulator, is you've got to express it. Find an outlet for those uh, senses that you've taken on, those experiences that you're feeling. Find an outlet for it. Turn it into something. In your case, you turned it into writing. It was an expression of what you were mm -hmm. feeling. You've got to channel it. The... And what you'll find in the channeling comes strength. The channeling 
will give you the energy you need to keep going. So often we think that resilience is a function of balancing sort of not too much with just enough, not too much with just enough. And, and it isn't really too much work. Resilience or burnout rather isn't a function of too much work. It's a function of not enough love. And so if you want resilience at times like this or at times like when your dad just died, you, yeah, when you're depleted, counterintuitively, do more. When you're depleted, express more. Intelligently. Like, do more yes, I, I don't, deliberately. Yes, I don't mean, like, just work 16 hours or 20 hours. I mean, when you know that you draw strength from being able to take a situation or a story and write it and elevate it so someone can read it and be drawn in by your grandfather and the story of what he was like and your story of your fear and your pain and your anxiety and your panic attacks around it, um, when you can express that, and you know, share it with others, and like share it, exactly. That actually brings you strength. That helps you get through it. But what and, about like, I don't know if other stimulators out there feel this, but I watch a movie, like when I watch the movie Blackfish, which, um, have, you, have you seen that? Yeah. Um, Blackfish is a movie about um, the rather negative experience of killer whales, um, orcas in SeaWorld. If you haven't seen it, you might want to see Blackfish. Well, the average person sees it and learns, and it's a really great production. I don't sleep for three days. I can't sleep for three days. So, or scary movies, it'll work the same way. It just gets in every fiber of me, and I want to shake it. I want to shake it. But, by the way, I, I actually didn't know this about I don't, I hate scary movies too. I can't <laughs> watch them. You can't watch them. No wonder we haven't yeah. watched any scary movies. <laughs> it's like, if you feel it too much, it's like, it's not fun. <laughs> it's like, ah. Um, but yeah, you, when you had that feeling, you, you did channel it. You were out in front of SeaWorld. You were protesting. When you do that, I don't want to turn this into a therapy, uh, a therapy session, but when you, when you take it in and hold it tight, then you get ill. When you take it in and channel it into something that lifts other people up, makes something more dramatic, makes people pay attention by you, in that case, standing outside SeaWorld and saying, you know, what these killer whales are in pain, then you become you. That is expression, that was expression. Right, that, then you become you. You aren't at your most um, fragile when you are expressing, you're at your most fragile when you're going, it's too much and it can't go anywhere. As a stimulator, you've got to turn it into a thing. That's really good. Really good. And it's, I mean, for me, it's also... I mean, it's... And you'll find this with the strengths that you have. The, the things that bring you strength are the things you can use to overcome weaknesses that you have. I had a weakness growing up in that I couldn't speak. You may know this, but I had a stammer, a stutter, terrible stutter, um, all the way up until I was about 12. And I've gone to every speech pathologist known to man or woman. It hadn't gotten any better. It's actually got worse. And then one day when I was 12, um, the headmaster of my school told me that I was the next day, the next morning, I was going to be reading aloud in chapel. And it was, I thought, oh my God, it's going to be a disaster. And the day before when I went, it was just him and me in the chapel, just him and me, I tried to read it. I couldn't read anything. Like it was really, I, I was probably my least fluent at that moment. The next morning, now there's 400 people in the darn chapel, so you'd think it'd be way worse. But I got up, I toddled up, went up to the lectern, turned around, I looked at the faces, and I'd never had this before ever in my life. I looked at the faces and just seeing their experience, their heightened experience of me, the heightening of the whole thing, which is what a stimulator is all about, made me fluent. I could feel my throat open up, and I, I wish I could explain it, but it felt like I was humming. Like everything was just humming. Like it was, oh, it was such a, oh, it was such a relief. And my little, there's, I'm sure you have this too, like a little person sometimes steps outside of the experience and that you look at yourself. And I realized right away that the actual, the heightened nature of the fact that people are all looking at you and, and um, they're, they're sort of waiting on what you're, that heightened experience makes me fluent. I can't talk to one person but I could talk to 400, like how weird is that? Anyway, I took that, and I didn't know this whole strength thing at the time, I'm 12, um, but I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna use any of those darn tactics or strategies that those speech, patholo that those speech pathologists have told me over the years, because they didn't work. Instead, what I'll do is when I'm talking to one person, I'll just pretend, 
that I'm talking to 400. Every person I talk to, I pretend I'm talking to 400. And my stammer went away in a week. You're st so for me, the stimulator is, yes, like you, it can be overwhelming. And yes, if I take it on and I can't do anything with it, I have to leave the room. Um, but it, for me, it is, I never feel so burdened by it because I feel so thankful. I am so thankful that I'm wired to get a kick out of heightened experiences. It's like one of the points of stand up is to go, when are you at your best? When are you most attractive? When are you most creative? When are you most intelligent? And for simulators, it's when things are heightened. And for some of you, if you don't have simulator, you're almost like, I don't even quite know what he's talking about. But for stimulators, you'll know when it, now you, you show it differently. You have different skills than I do, oh, that's interesting. right? Like I wouldn't have been able to pick this out. I love it like you do, but I couldn't have chosen it. And I probably wouldn't have got the story of the guy who actually makes it and his story. And, that, and so I, I learn from your heightening because you heighten in a way that's different than the way I do. If you're a stimulator, you, you, you won't look like me, smell like me, talk like me. You'll do your own thing to make things more memorable. Um, but what a gift it is if you've got it. Because it can, I mean, it can save you. Because it, because it really does make you the very best version of yourself. Can I ask a couple of questions? What would you yeah. say about stimulator and trust? And I'm kind of just thinking about leadership. And yes, they're, you know, the rah-rah. But is there a... Do people trust stimulators instinctively? Well, not instinctively. I think if you look at every single one of those nine strengths roles, um, people trust you for different reasons. Mm -hmm. If you are a provider, people trust you because you've got their back. Do people see you as a cheerleader and not take you serious? So yes, so for every strength role, there's a danger, right? That you, that you could be um, caricatured. Mm -hmm. And the stimulator danger is it's all fluff. It's all stupid, <laughs> it's all party hats. Um, oh, he's a cheerleader, oh, she's a cheerleader. It's not real, you know, or it's not, um, it's not possible. Or weighty enough, or Right, you've just, you've just, you've rah rah it, you've rah rah it. But the solution to that, frankly, is, um, if you want people to trust you in terms of your raw rawness, vividness is the vividness, 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 vividness. And that's a strength. Which is a strength of a simulator. So tell us what the future is. Tell us what it's like. Tell, tell us why we're winning. Tell us the stories. Tell us the narrative of this little chappy here. Because all that kind of vividness and specificity makes you look, as a simulator, it makes you look weighty. Like you've, like you've thought this through, that the picture of the future you're painting isn't just this broad strokes of possibility. It's like, no, no, no. This is what we'll see there. This is what we'll feel there. This is why we'll win there. This is who we'll serve there. Let me tell you a story about who we'll serve. Mm -hmm. Boom, off you go. Mm. Oh, by the way. Um, sorry, if you didn't know, do you know the I question? Have more, okay, course, just a quick thing then. Two things you should know as stimulators. One, story, two, brand. One, story, two, brand. You are story, good story. As a stimulator, you are aware of story because story just takes the normal part of the world, regular sort of life, and it it heightens the narrative. There are heroes and anti-heroes and antagonists and protagonists and, and, and plot and drama. And that makes everything more memorable. So in this day of, of uh, over-stimulus, where there's so much that's hitting you and everybody, your ability to take normal events and turn them into stories, short little stories, long played out stories, your ability to do that is a really powerful gift. So that's the first thing. The other thing is brand. Um, if you work in a corporation or an organization that has products, um, having a brand story where the character of that brand, what it stands for, what it's about, what it believes, um, what its purpose is. So, as you know, stimulators, so many brands are bland. Your ability, you've got an ability to take a thing, it could be a, it could be a jar, and you could be in the jar business, and you'll turn that jar business into a business with a story and the story is a brand. So as you think about different um, places where you add value as a stimulator, story is one and brand is another. So think about that in terms of your contribution to your teams or your companies. Mm -hmm. you, um, can I ask a couple questions? 
But one of the things it says um, under what to watch out for, don't fight this need to be liked. It is one of the sources of your effectiveness. So I find that interesting because I think a lot of stimulators, they want to be liked. And so understanding that it's you know part of effectiveness is great. On another page, it says, um, you aren't soft and gentle. On the yeah. contrary, you will challenge people to unleash their own energy and you become impatient when someone refuses to do so. So something that I run into and probably other people do as well is because I do put a lot of effort into being liked and, and having good relationships. Um, when you are ready to get serious because your ex my expectations are high, really, really high, yeah. I'm not soft, I'm not fluffy. So I think it gets... Um, confusing to some people because it's like yeah yeah best friends rah 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 and then, and then all of a sudden yes. the teeth come out yeah I, my advice to you would be smile less <laughs> and uh, getting people to want to like you is a weakness no um, isn't that funny though it, um, we're often told that you shouldn't want people to like you that you actually shouldn't be concerned about other, anybody else's opinion of you which is a fine thing to say in, 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 in the abstract um, but the reality is, for certain kinds of people, and stimulators are some of those kinds of people, we are acutely aware of somebody else's emotional reaction to us. It's like being a stand-up comedian telling the stand-up comedian to, uh, well, don't worry about the laughter. <laughs> you don't need to worry whether people actually like you, whether they laugh at your jokes. I mean, that's absurd, right? So for stimulators, we do want people to like us. We do want people's reaction to be a positive emotional one. We will smile. We will work it to get people to like us. That's not a weakness. That's actually part of the contribution that we make in the world. We know that people tend to do an awful lot more for people that they like. And we actually, many of us are pretty good at trying to get people to like us and we kind of like it. It's not like it's a burden, but for some people, that's why so much of this general social or psychological advice can be so dangerous. Because you would never tell a stimulator not to worry about whether or not someone liked it. Like for me to tell that to you, you're like, okay, I'm, uh, how, how do I even make s how do you turn that right. off? Right. So you don't turn it off. Again, you channel it, you express it, you turn it into contribution. That's the first thing. And then the second thing you were saying is, yeah, um, the the challenge I think you sometimes do have is that you're all smiles and you're happy and you're you've got a way with words and people like you know they they smile too and you're funny. Um, and we naturally see what's right in people. And you see what's right in people, you see what's right in situations. I mean, you're looking for the heightenedness, mm -hmm. right? The uplift. Mm -hmm. That's what you're all about. So you're used to that. And they're, right. they're used to that, right. Um, but as it says in there, that doesn't, <laughs> this isn't existing. <laughs> She's looking at me like I'm an idiot. Um, but I'm clearly not. Um, but it, that doesn't mean, and you, this is, and I've said this to you before too, heightened emotions. Don't, that doesn't always necessarily mean smiles. Heightened emotions can be challenge. Mm. It can be um, time pressure. It can be, listen, if no one did this, it wouldn't be done. Tell that story. That's a bad story. It's like you, people want heightened drama from you. Not always rah-rah drama. Sometimes it's just like, this is super bloody important. And when you do that, if you do more, a little more of that expression, then you're not one note. Mm. But you've also, this is true for you, it's true for all of us. We've got to figure out how to weave our strength into all sorts of different intelligent expressions of it. If you get one note with your stimulator, if my shell gets one note with her stimulator, then yeah, people are gonna be surprised when you suddenly come on strong and now you're like passionately ticked, you know? Mm. And the same is true for you. You've got to find lots of intelligent ways, different ways to express the natural um, stimulator that you have. And when you do, people will know. They will come to you for drama. They will come to you for excitement. And they will come to you for the pressure of following through on a great story. Right? That's... Mm, um, passionate purpose isn't always happy. Mm. Sometimes it's like, God, this is so important. I think you do a good, really good job at that. In your leadership. I don't know. I hope. I, I, I hope. And I'm learning just like everyone else is. One last thing that I would say before we... Like one last thing for simulators. Michelle was telling me a story last night about these strengths can come upon you in a way that totally flipping surprise the living daylights out of you. So she's nine years old, ten years old. And 
No one's told her the word stimulate. She doesn't even know there's a thing called strengths. There's no anything in there in the world of school that helps her know about her uniqueness. And she goes and has some um, tacos with a friend. And the mom just cooks the, right, cooks the mince, right? And then just puts a taco out with a little bowl of mince, which for many people would be like, it's just fine, it's fine, you took the taco. You... For whatever reason, my, my sales family, and her dad was a, you know, um, a teacher, and mom was a, an assistant, and a secretary at the school, didn't have a lot of, a lot of money, um, but they were, the whole experience of making a taco was like, a, was like an event in their house, and there would be a little taco bar, and it was all sort of all set up so that all the senses, the smells, the looks, the sights, the sounds, or the feels of it were like a whole thing, which sounds like it would be like a nice to have. Oh, it's just a nice, that's kind of nice. But for whatever reason, my child's got a kind of, her story was, this is her story, I went to that person's house, and I, everything about the, the, the minimalism of that experience weirded me out so much, I almost couldn't stay in the house, and I didn't know what to do with it, right? And you were saying it was just like and, and massive anxiety. Massive anxiety. It, was like, it didn't feel like there was a love there. And I, there was lots of love there, but it, it's... But what it meant was a pattern of reaction started to happen to you where the world was speaking to you in a language. It just kept speaking to you. Mm -hmm. Here's taco sitting in a, in a plain bowl with a plain taco. And for whatever stupid reason, that freaked you out. There's a lot of people you're watching right now, you're probably going, well, that wouldn't freak me out. That's weird. Um, but it did you. Okay. But it, and that wasn't an isolated I incident, was it? You remember things, like weirdly specific things, lift you up or freak you out. It is like the world for you is turned up to 11. And that you... you had panic attacks all the way. You didn't even know why your. She didn't know. She didn't know. Like maybe you don't know why your reactions are your reactions. So at nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old, your strengths are too big for the child. Your strengths are so big. You don't know what to do with them. And unless there is a language, a framework, a set of concepts to understand or help. In this case, my show you understand that my reactions aren't weird. That wasn't a disease you had. That was what we're calling now, stimulator. That was a strength. But I thought something was wrong with me. You thought you were nuts. Strengths are too big often for the child. One of the things that we are definitely going to do, and that, you know, talk about getting passionate about it, is we need to imagine a world where in the future, that version of my show doesn't get totally weirded out so that she's on pills for her teenage years because of anxiety or heart palpitations. Or, like, you were pathologized like that, right? We need to have a world where there is an entire framework at school and at home where parents understand that each one of their children are enduringly different. My child has an elder sister. She's not weirded out by the things that weird my child. So you can't explain my child's natural reaction to the world through the way that she was raised. You explain it through the clash of her chromosomes. She's weirdly unique. We ought to have a language about that. We ought to have a way of explaining that to parents. We ought to have curricula in schools that teaches my shell how to own it, name it, and channel it. <gasps> what a beautiful thing that would have been for that future my shell. She wouldn't have gone, I am so nuts, I will be on heart medication for the next 10 years. Like, we just made you broken and you're not. In fact, it was the beautiful manifestation of one of the defining characteristics of you, and you thought you were sick. Okay, so in terms of one of the things that, if you're part of this community, I really, really hope you stay close to us around, is that we can't have that. We can't call our children sick when they're not sick. They're just them. And we simply haven't given them a way to understand all those essences of them those unique aspects of them, we haven't given them a name for that, we haven't given them a way to own that, and we haven't helped them know the routines, the rituals, the practices through which they can channel themselves. We haven't done that, and we should. It's hard to take you seriously right now. I want to, but these okay. things are fluffing up, and you're using your arms, and they float, and it looks good, though. Thank you. I worked hard on this.